Imagine that you bought a textbook for a class that you've just enrolled in and you open up that textbook and there's no table of contents. And, oh, okay, that's a little bit frustrating, but you're sure you can make do, maybe they misprinted or something. But then you open up the book and the entire 1200 pages are all a size 12 font, page after page of content with an image thrown in here every now and then for fun but there's just no structure to any of the information there. But I mean, all the information is there, right? So why would that be so frustrating? Well, we like books to have structure to them so we can actually find the information we're looking for. Tables of contents allow us to find what we're looking for really quickly and easily and understand what the content is related to. And then like large headings, bold text, color boxes, all these things that like sort of call different things out, give different things attention. They also help us visually organize the content so we can quickly skim through things or we can easily identify what we're actually looking at. It makes it easier to consume and that's why semantic HTML is so important and it's what we're going to be diving into in this video. Hi there my friend and friends and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel I help you fall madly, deeply in love with CSS and if not in love with it, at least to hate it a little bit less. Though today we're taking a little bit of a break from CSS, though we will touch on it a little bit, and we're mostly gonna be focusing on the wonderful and underappreciated world that is HTML, and more specifically, semantic HTML. We're going to explore why it's important and also some easy solutions to making sure that you're following the right path when using it. So things look a little weird here. We have three screens instead of one. I'm in the Polypane browser rather than Chrome or Firefox, even though there are accessibility checks in those. I will be using Polypane for this one because it gives us a lot of accessibility tools, including a really easy way to break down semantic HTML and the outline and everything. Uh, so it's gonna make our life a little bit easier, but we don't need three of these. So let me just close off uh, this one and this one. So we just are left with this one window right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to here which are the dev tools and we get our regular dev tools just like you know and love. Uh, but the nice thing with Polypane is we can, I'm just gonna shrink this down a smidgen. There we go. Um, the nice thing with Polypane is if I go over to this info here, I get into this area uh, which I can get meta information actually which is really cool but we're not gonna worry about that. I'm just going to the outline and I get different options here. I can look for images, links, landmarks and we're gonna go through some of these or quite a lot, most of these in this, this video. And we're going to start with this, the document outline, which shows me the outline of my document. And think of the document outline a little bit like the table of contents with a little bit of extra information in here. So you can see that uh, we have the body itself and it says untitled body. We don't have to worry too much there. Um, we have an aside and a nav. So we have those two right there. And then we have an H1. And the reason that these are all saying they're untitled is just because the H1 is coming after those. Um, so we'll come back to that in a sec. I'm going to open up the dev tools and we can explore why these are untitled. But then you can see here I have an H1 and then we have my the title of my page. So this is really like a table of contents. I have my title. Then we're getting an H2 here, which is my table of contents itself, which um, we're actually isn't visible on the screen. And we'll talk about that a little bit as well um, in a second. Uh, but then I have another H2 and then I have these H3s. And notice how like they're this, I, I like this visual representation because the H3s are falling underneath the H2. And this is we're getting the Boot Campers Guide to Web Accessibility, an introduction to web accessibility. These are like subsections of this learn the fundamental principles behind accessible design. So we have learn the fundamentals. Let's even go look at it. Let's find it. And I can hover there. It brings me there. So here's the learn the fundamentals. And then there's two different articles that I can choose from. And there's a little bit of context for what each one is. So we have a separate heading for each one of those to say, this is what we're talking about. Here's one piece of information on that. Here's another. There's two subsections of this main, of this other section that we're inside of. And this is how heading levels are meant to be used. They are meant to be used to create a table of contents type of outline for your document. They're not meant to style things. And let's go over to FIFA. And I'm just using the FIFA site because I've known for a while it's had problems with their CSS. So I assumed it had problems and it, it does. So we'll let the page load. Um, and we'll talk about it a little bit. Let's just shrink that down. And I think the FIFA sites has been this collimation of tons and tons of de developers adding like a little thing here, a little thing there, and not really looking at the code base too much and just needing to work quickly. So I'm not blaming anyone uh, on that side of things. Uh, so we'll go back to info, document outline. And you can see right now we have an untitled body actually with nothing else. That seems a bit weird. So let's refresh because sometimes uh, that helps just populate here if you see some a problem. Um, so notice here we have an untitled body again and we have an untitled nav and then we have actually an H6 is up here and then eventually we get to my H1s over here. Um, 
And so the titles down here, and then we have an H1 and then an H5, which is okay, my H5 is acting as a subsection over here. Um, and then latest news more. So like as a table of contents, you can probably start seeing some issues coming up here. Um, or even here we have FIFA president more. That's a weird sort of subsection of content. And again, think of your heading levels as creating a table of contents. It's the easiest way to think about it. And having a, a heading level as more doesn't really give any context or tell us what this section of content should actually be about. Uh, even though if we go and look at it, it, it sort of does make sense. I think because I'm in mobile view, there we go, there's my more. And then we get all these little articles that are popping up in there. The interesting thing is all these little articles, there's no head, even though each one has a heading, these aren't actually headings in my document outline because they set them up probably as paragraphs. Uh, or just within divs or whatever it is. Uh, then, so here we have FIFA president. Then somehow world ranking of men and women is under FIFA president, which seems a little weird, right? That to me, if I'm looking at this, the more I guess makes sense, even though FIFA president. So here we have FIFA president and we're going into all articles that are related or talking about the president. So maybe even this more title here could have been like more information about the president and then have all of these have a heading level, another level lower. Uh, that actually make it fall into the document outline in a smarter way. Um, and I'm actually not sure how this section, so this section, because of the way the heading were, and because they decided to use an H1 here, which you shouldn't have multiple H1s, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but because of that, this H3 here is actually within the document outline, the world rankings, which is here and should be its own thing, is falling within this FIFA president section here. And that's really, really awkward, no? Like to me, that, that doesn't make any sense uh, that the world rankings would be there. This should be its own thing. And it looks like they tried to do that by putting in a section here but I don't think it quite did what they were expecting it to do. Uh, it's kind of interesting that they have a section here, but they don't have sections anywhere else either. Um, so just to throw that out there. Oh no, there is another one. There's the, there's a few sections. There's two sections. We have that and the all FIFA section. Um, and here, I guess it makes a bit more sense. We have all FIFA and then we have about FIFA, women's football, social impact. So like, these are things that do make sense to sort of create subcategories around. But let's go over from the document outline. Let's just go to the headings. So this takes out like where there's navs or sections or anything and it just shows us all the heading levels. And we'll turn on show issues to see that there are quite a few here. Um, some of them are duplicate headers found. So it's women's and women's. And again, if you're looking at this from a document outline, women's, women's what, right? The heading, there's no, there's nothing here that's saying what the women's is for. And maybe visually when you see it on the screen, it makes a bit more sense. But we need to think about things from a semantic point of view and what it's saying, regardless of what we see on the screen. Is it women's ranking? Is it links to more women's stuff? Like women's and you know, why is there two of them? And you can even say duplicate headers found. So that's kind of awkward. Um, I don't know what's happening here and it doesn't make any sense. I should be able to understand at least the sectioning of content just by looking at the headings. Uh, another thing that we'll see is that there's a lot of uh, skipped heading levels. We have first a ton of H1s, which use one H1 per page. Uh, but then we also have all these skipped headings. And this is the same. We're thinking a table of content. So when you look at your table of contents, you have a section and then you have subsections and then sometimes more and then sometimes more. And if you were to all of a sudden like strip away some of those subsections and just have like, okay, we're going four levels deep here, it doesn't really make sense and it doesn't really work. So just something to watch out for. Um, and just to try and always be following your heading levels in a logical way. There has been talk at one point of just having an H element and letting the browser figure things out, but that obviously hasn't come to be, at least not yet. Uh, and another thing you might read is with the HTML5 document outline, they implemented, or they implemented, it became part of the spec that you would actually be able to have multiple H1s. And the thinking here is you could have a section of content and just throw an H1 in there. And the browser would say, okay, this is a section, this section is going to get its own hierarchy within the bigger picture of the hierarchy of the rest of the page, which could make it a little bit easier for the developers, uh, but none of the browsers actually implemented it. And with the browsers not implementing it, the system technologies can't use it. And so we're stuck with that not actually being a thing, even though it was put into the spec at one point, nobody has actually implemented it. So if you ever see something saying you can use multiple headings, we don't want to do that. And another thing that they did here was they have an H1 here as a title, and then they have an H5 here, which to me is a subtitle. And why is it an H5? It's because that's the styling that goes with their H5, I'm guessing. And that's why they chose it. That would be my honest guess here. And so we have one month to the Arab, the FIFA Arab Cup. We bring you 31 stats about the competition. You shouldn't use a heading level as a subtitle because this would be the same thing as your table of contents when you open up a textbook 
The subtitles are not the subsections, right? You don't want to create a new subsection of content within that area. You want it to be a subtitle to give more context to what the title is. And so to do that, you shouldn't use a heading level. You should just use a paragraph of content and style it differently. Style it to look like a subtitle. And if you want to, you can also, you have a, say a section or a, an article here, let's say. You throw in your H2, style it how you need to, and then just put a paragraph there and wrap that paragraph and heading within a header. So you can have a, you can have multiple headers on a site. It's not just for the navigation logo-y area at the top of your page. You can use headers within multiple areas. So a section can have a header. You can also have a, a header within an article. If you want an area within something to be defined as like the head for that, and you can have multiple paragraphs in there even if you need to, you can go ahead and do something like that. And that leads me outside of the headings and to go into landmarks. And landmarks are really interesting. Because you can see here we have my header, which is my banner, and then we have my nav, and we have a main, and we have a footer. And you might recognize these elements. And these are elements that create landmarks within a page. And that is things that assistive technologies can use to easily identify different parts of a page and quickly access those different points. And you'll notice that they have a side header, main, nav, a side footer, nav. And oh, look at that, we have multiple navigations. That's kind of exciting. And you don't have, you can just have one navigation on a site. That's perfectly fine. And not all sets of links that are bringing you to different areas do need to be navigations. Um, but these landmark areas are areas, again, that you can quickly, can be quickly identified by screen readers and assistive technologies to skip through things. Maybe you want to skip all the way to the main. There's other ways of doing that. Uh, or they want to, they know they're on a navigation, things like that. And it makes people's lives easier when you properly use your landmarks instead of just using divs everywhere. So this is a really good reason to be using semantic HTML as well. And you'll notice that we have, um, this is a complementary one. Here we have a table of contents, which is listed as a navigation, my primary navigation, and aside, complementary information, uh, the footer, and then another navigation here. And what's interesting, if we look at this, so let's go find that. I'm going to click on it, and it actually brings me here. And you'll see that there's an area label of primary. Because there are multiple navigations, if you only have one navigation, you really don't have to worry about it. But if you do have multiple navigations, it's really important that when you're setting those up that you actually identify them so people know what they're getting. So here we have a nav, which is a secondary nav, so area label table of contents. So by giving it this area label, we're identifying what that, what that element is. Uh, and why we have multiple navs in there. So it gives a little bit more context. So you have your primary navigation, then this is a table of contents for other information that's on the page. So build the basics, conduct our cultivate community and explore. So we have like a little table, how do I get started? And then we have a table of contents so you can get to where you want to go. Really interestingly here, we do have an H2 that's visually hidden. So you can see you hide visually. I like that class name. <laughs> um, and that's on my H2, and the, the text in there literally is table of contents. We saw that when we were looking before, and I said I would come back to this. And that's because visually, I don't need to see table of contents here. If I can, if I can see the page, I can quickly see that these are links, and I get an idea of how do I get started. Build the, I, I don't need that table of contents extra information. But if a non-sighted user gets here, it could be really useful to have something saying, you're at a navigation, it's a table of contents. And that allows them to quickly, again, we're on a navigation, we're in our main, then we get to a new navigation. So they may go, I, I don't want to bother with this nav, I'm going to skip it. And they can easily skip down to the content that's going to be coming down after that. And then the really important thing is coming up with a logical order for your headings. So you're actually creating something that looks like a logical table of contents instead of it just being this mess of things with heading levels. And this is an evolution that I've had with my own CSS, where I used to style my H1, my H2, my H3 to style them the way those headings should look. And then what I started doing was, well, sometimes I needed something, I had an H5 that should look like an H3, or I would have a paragraph that I needed to look like a heading. And so what I would do is I would have all my, I'd have like H1 comma dot H1. So I could choose, do I want my, if it's an H1, it's going to look like an H1, but if I need to style something like an H1, I had that class available. And what I've done more and more now is not actually styled the H1 through H6 in any meaningful way. I've done it all through classes. Now I'm often using utility classes for things like this. So I can choose my font size, my font weight, my text transform, all of those independent and mix and match things as I need to. But I'm not relying on my heading levels like I'm pretty sure FIFA has been doing on their site. Set up as many classes as you need to be able to easily do these things and rely on styling things with your classes because then it makes a mess of the document outline, which we can see here. 
And that mess of a document outline makes it more difficult for assistive technologies, screen readers, and bots to be able to read your site and understand what's actually going on with everything. And I really think that's an easy thing to be able to implement into a site without having to dive too far down the rabbit hole of accessibility. It's one of these nice, easy wins that you can make. And if you'd like more videos on accessibility, you wanna go into some of the other semantic tags like article, section, main, all of that, and you'd like a video dedicated to those, leave a comment down below and let me know. And if you'd like to know more about Polypane, cause it's not just about accessibility, it's about a whole lot more than that. I've put a link down below to them. It is a paid application though they do have a free trial so you can check it out. And they also do offer uh, licenses to students as well. So if you're a student, you wanna check it out. They do have options around that as well. And once again, if you'd like more content on semantic HTML where we dive away from the document outline and talk more about landmark regions and other things like that, leave that comment down below. And with that, a really big thank you to both Stuart and Randy who are my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon as well as all my other patrons for the monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.